Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're looking at another SIG. This is the SIG 716 DMR version. Uh, as you can see, this is a little unique looking. It has an extra long handguard that's about the same length as the barrel. Uh, this is a, definitely a precision rifle. Uh, I definitely found that out when I shot it. It was an extremely accurate rifle. Uh, SIG 716 line uh, has been around for quite some time. Uh, it's external piston short stroke tappet. Um, it's, uh, it's done quite well. Uh, it's a uh, it's definitely seen some service with police departments. It's been uh, relatively popular. Not an inexpensive gun by no means. Uh, you know, the MSRP on this particular version is $3,109.99. You know, SIG is not what you would call um, an inexpensive uh, gun by no means. But uh, the fit, finish, the quality uh, of them is first rate. Um, you know, this one chambered in 762 by 51 or 308 Winchester. Uh, the ammunition I've been using with this has been the, uh, the SIG Sauer uh, line of ammunition, 168 grain match. I've been using quite a bit of this ammunition over the last uh, year or so, and I've been definitely very, very impressed with it. Um, this this is definitely sub-MOA at 100 yards, there's no question about it, uh, with, with this ammunition. Uh, I do hope to see the SIG come out with a 175 grain version in the, in the future of the, uh, of the of this cartridge. Um, the other cartridge I use quite a bit of is the Black Hills 175 grain OTM, uh, which uh, is also an incredibly accurate cartridge. Those are my, you know, my two-go uh, rounds for, for, for 308 Winchester. I think what we're going to do now is we're just going to jump right into this thing. We're going to go over from butt to muzzle, and we're going to uh, see what makes this thing up. Starting in the rear, we have a CTR stock. Uh, it's a Magpul CTR stock. Receiver extensions, four position. Now, the lower receiver on this thing uh, is very unique in the fact that it has a uh, QDs on both right and left-hand side. It also has the SIG proprietary. Uh, it's a very high-profile safety, ambidextrous, uh, left and right-hand side. You have an oversized magazine release, which is something else that's very nice about this. It's a, it's a lot more for you to get a bite on. Now, the magazine here, this is a, a, a this is not what comes with it. This comes with a, a Magpul P-Mag. This particular magazine is one that I've been quite fond of. This is a uh, DNH Tactical 20-round magazine, orange follower. Now, uh, to my understanding, this may have been discontinued. I'm not sure, but uh, I've been using these for quite some time. I'm sure whatever they've come out with is uh, just as good as this. But uh, I'm particularly fond of these magazines. Looking on the left-hand side, you'll see we have, again, ambidextrous uh, safety, ambidextrous uh, magazine release. And we have an extended bolt catch. If you see right here, you can see how they've extended the bottom over, which makes this much easier for your hand to, to, to get to to push, to push down. That's definitely an enhancement. Uh, both the receivers are manufactured from forging the 7075 T6 aircraft aluminum. Looking on the upper, you do have a forward assist. Fire cartridge case deflector. And you also have on here SIG's ambidextrous charging handle. This is a very well made charging handle. It's very easy to grasp. Um, I've got a very similar one on my MPX and MCX. It's uh, quite well made. Now, looking at the handguard, as we said, uh, we have free floating, uh, we have key mod, uh, and you can see we have quite a bit of, uh, of open air for air to circulate, open marks. Um, we also have a adjustable gas valve, as you can see right here. You have suppressed, and you flip it on the other side, you have unsuppressed. So this enables you to run this system uh, properly. Uh, when you have a sound suppressor, you're backing up pressure, so you're increasing the pressure uh, in the inside. Uh, what that does is it operates your mechanism quicker, uh, it can cause malfunctions, it can cause uh, parts breakage. So when you have the gas set on um, suppressed, what it does is it restricts the amount of gas flow in, so it's equivalent or almost equivalent to that as unsuppressed. So you're still running the rifle at its normal operating uh, mech, uh, operating pressures, so it's not being damaged. Now the sights that I'm using on here are uh, are Troy. They're Troy offset sights. Now this works very well for going to close quarter because you can switch over like this. You're losing your optic, then you can switch over uh, like so for your iron sights. Um, a lot of times you have higher power scopes on these kinds of rifles. When something gets up really, really close, you can have difficulty uh, because of the adjustments of where the, where the scope is. This, this enables you to have a quick turn to be able to use for close quarter. Now these sites here are available uh, from Troy, and you, had, you do have our code, uh, which you can get a percentage off of those. Now the code that we have for, to save the money on the Troy products is only good until through December. We're going to try to get that extended. Uh, but as of now, it's only good through the end of the month. So if you are looking to get any any of the Troy products, anything in their entire uh, lineup, um, you can use that code and you can, you can get a percentage off of that. Now, the optic I have on here, SIG has been uh, doing a lot with optics over the last couple of years. 
and um, they've been gracious enough to let me borrow a lot of their different optics. I've had a chance to use a lot of their different optics. And uh, this particular one we have here is called the Tango 6. It's a 1 to 6 by 24. And it's mounted with a Geisley mount. Now, Geisley, you know, you guys know they make some of the best mounts in the industry. Um, so that's why I utilized for this. You do have the, large, the larger ring on here uh, to adjust your, your your magnification. And you also have two fiber optics on here as well. So when you're looking from the rear and you have light on there, you can see you know where that is. That's a pretty neat little feature that they put on there with the fiber optics. Now, uh, looking at the barrel on here, uh, the, bar the barrel is, is Cold Hammer Forged. Um, it is a uh, excellent heavy heavy barrel. Um, you have a muzzle brake on here as well. Uh, the gas system is a short stroke tappet, and we're going to take a look at that right now. Take a look at the inside. Before we look into the upper, the lower, you can see we have a Geisley trigger, a Geisley two-stage trigger, uh, a match-grade match, a match trigger. And as you know, anything that comes out of Geisley is a, is a precision trigger. Looking at your bolt carrier group, this is a proprietary bolt carrier group. Uh, the bolt uh, utilizes two ejectors, uh, which is an excellent reliability enhancement for any of these shorter barrel uh, type 308s. What happens with a lot of these is, is when you get the, when you, the shorter the barrel or the shorter the gas system, and particularly in this, uh, this is a, this is like it's around the carbine length type gas system. You, the, the more pressure that you have in there, the faster it drives everything rearward. With a shorter gas system, you increase your cyclic rate of fire, which is the number of rounds you fire per minute, which speeds everything up. It speeds up the unlocking, unlocking, speeds up extraction, ejection, and so forth. What those two ejectors do for you is when the when the bolt opens and it starts to and it ejects, those two springs give you a lot more extraction force to throw that cartridge out. So the bolt doesn't overrun it, meaning that the cartridge case will have enough time to get out of the receiver before the bolt carrier group goes forward. Um, you'll see most manufacturers are doing this now. LMT was probably one of the, probably the first one that does it. HK does it. Uh, these guys do it. Uh, there's a couple other ones that do it as well. They're just not escaping me. The, the Gen, I believe the Gen 2 DPMS do it as well. So uh, nitride coated. And you can see there's material that's been removed to lighten it up. You do have a couple gas vents on here as well. There's no gas rings because it's not necessary. Most of the time when you see gas rings on piston-operated guns, what, what that what gas rings do is it makes it easier to assemble. Where this one here, as you can see, there's, you have to make sure that that's in the unlock position when you insert it. If you had gas rings in there, that would make it so it would be stiffer there, uh, so it would be easier to reassemble. But gas rings are not necessary. We'll take a closer look at that charging handle as well. So for the gas system, this is me. This is a little tricky to get out, so bear with me. You have a plunger here, so you have suppressed and then unsuppressed. And you'll see that a projectile is used to adjust that. So we have a plunger we have to depress. And we can see the operating rod, the piston, operating rod spring, and your gas valve. Now you can see up front here, these, these front two holes that you see, these are the actual uh, gas vents. So you'll see one is larger than the other. The larger one is a standard operating, and the smaller one's going to be for suppressed to let in less gas. What you see around here, these radials here are gas relief. Uh, once the piston moves rearward, it will clear those vents and that will expend any unnecessary gas. Uh, and, and expands that gas up in the front of the handguard, nowhere near the shooter or the shooter's hands. You can also see here uh, where you can use a, a, a bullet tip uh, to be able to adjust as well. It's a little more complicated to put back together as you're going to see uh, because of the long handguard, but it's not much of a problem. Now the muzzle blast on here is excessive, but recoil is absolute minimal. 
Uh, most of the time, that's what you do when you get when you get a DMR rifle. Uh, you you want to decrease recoil as much as possible so you can stay on target and you get quicker follow up shots. Uh, that's one of the things that you uh, you do notice uh, with, with these kind of rifles. But I have to say that uh, I would rather have a flash suppressor with less muzzle blast and less flash on there uh, than I would the muzzle the muzzle uh, muzzle brake for reassembly. Insert like so. Now, when you maintain these types of, uh, of weapons, I recommend getting a, like a bronze or a stainless steel all-purpose brush just to get all the carbon out of here. As much as everybody talks about the direct gas system, how you get uh, all the carbon back into the, into the carrier, all that carbon stays up here. And these can get carbon froze into the uh, gas block as well. So I would recommend that you always uh, take the uh, you know, a bronze or a stainless steel AP brush and clean that on the outside as well as the inside. So now we're going to insert that back. Now we have to get a longer screwdriver. Need to depress the plunger. So, and you want to be able to make sure that you can adjust up and down. Suppressed. Unsuppressed. Reassembly like any other M4 type rifle. This is where the gas rings help out a little bit. Now the, the rifle is relatively heavy, to say the least, um, but you're looking at a uh, you're looking at a batch grade rifle. You're going to have a heavy barrel on there for, uh, for your precision accuracy. You definitely are going to want to put some kind of a handguard on here or some kind of uh, some kind of a rail protector because this will get hot. Did you see the handguards are, are key mod? Um, you know the, the war between key mod and M lock continues. Um, I have to say these days I'm starting to push more towards M lock myself. I have such a hard time inserting uh, you know the the rail the rail segments on these things. I don't I don't know why. Uh, I, I doubt it's anything I'm doing wrong. It's not one of those things that's really uh, that complicated. But uh, I think the M lock is a hell of a lot easier. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the range. And we're going to see how it shoots. Well, I was very impressed with how this thing shot. I mean, we were definitely sub M away with both uh, the SIG and the Black Hills ammunition. The uh, reliability, of course, is right there. One thing that you do notice for any of you guys who are reloaders, when you have dual ejector springs in there, you're going to be chasing your brass a lot farther uh, than normal. So that's something else you got to uh, be prepared for is you're going to be chasing your brass a little bit further. 
you know, it's a heavy duty rifle. Uh, it's not something that you're going to want to carry around all day, but it's also a DMR type rifle where you're probably going to be in a stationary position anyways. Um, you know, if you wanted a rifle for, uh, for, for free gun shooting or longer range shooting, this is certainly a good rifle for you to look at. Um, it's a little bit heavier for, you know, for, for carrying, uh, in the woods, but, uh, you know, it's a, it's a 7.62. You can use any kind of ammunition that's in the industry out there. Uh, I've never had a problem with SIGs with ammunition compatibility whatsoever. Um, their system is gassed properly to the point where you can suppress. Uh, you can use any kind of ammunition that's out there. Um, if you guys have any questions, please uh, leave them down there at the, uh, in the comments. I'll see if I can answer them. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click like. Please subscribe, and even better, share. Thank you.